As an entrepreneur, you got to figure out what's going to excite you, what's going to make you passionate about your business. And again, if you've been in in your business for 20 years, you might need to ask yourself this because if you're not excited about getting out of bed in the morning, you're not driven by your business every single day, and you're not super passionate about what you're doing, you might need to kind of reevaluate this process in your business and see, am I going in the right direction? Do I love what I'm doing? Do I just need to make a minor shift towards that way or that way to find what I'm really looking for? of your income is made on 20% of your results. So try to increase that 20% results to maybe 30% this next quarter and maybe 40% the next quarter because it's going to allow you to do more and more things. So understanding your past business and what you've done this year and maybe this market's different than it was last year. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks again for being here. Every single week, we do this show lives Monday, live Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific. If you're watching the rebroadcast, you're probably getting some awesome content out of this. I'd love for you guys to show up live. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some love. Let me know that you enjoy the content and that this is the direction that you guys need to go in your life. Also, post your questions. Guys, this show is all for you. We answer your top four questions every single week, making sure that we address the content that you guys need to help you expand your business, grow into more amazing things, and just do what you're trying to do. So. Anyway, these four questions come from you. This is the starting from new episode. Starting over, starting new, brand new. Doesn't matter if you're changing careers. Doesn't matter if you're day number one out of life and uh, just starting over. There's going to be some awesome content from you. And then there's going to be a couple curveballs as always for you. Okay, so let's just jump right into this. This is probably the hardest question I think I've had to answer on this show. And obviously, this is my opinion. And you may have some different opinions, but we're going to let you know where this one goes. So the question number one is, what are some easy ways to become more self-aware. And really, it's as open-ended as that. It could be self-aware in life. It could be self-aware in your business. It could be self-aware in how you look, right? Like, what? I don't know. Anyway, we don't know some clarifications on here, but I'm going to just kind of take this where it goes and see if it can bring you some value in your life. So being self-aware is an interesting thing to think about, right? So you could be self-aware of how you speak, your mannerisms, how you eat, how you perform your life functions, right? You may not even be aware of some of the nuances that you do in your life. And over the weekend, I had a chance to go out to dinner with some friends. And this is one thing that drives my wife crazy is when you're out eating and, you know, like chomping away. And I think a lot of people just eat and they don't even realize that kind of stuff. And it bugged my wife insane. Like it just drives her crazy. And I'll catch myself from time to time eating my mouth open. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Uh And then I didn't even realize other people do it until she brought it to my attention, right? And so sometimes others can make you self-aware and they can bring these things to your attention. And now every time I hear people do this, like, oh, it just drives me crazy. And now it's going to drive you guys crazy too. It's kind of funny. But some people care, some people don't. It's it's really your preference. But I think the point is, is that you can live your life and not even be aware of the things that you're doing in your life. You may have habits or patterns or things that you do and you may not even realize it, right? So eating is a big one. It could just be life habits, right? Like, are you taking care of your body? Are you doing the things that you need to do? Are you self-aware of how you look and dress and perform? Do you, you know, mumble a lot? Do you say ums? Do you have a hard time getting your story out? Some things that are relevant in my family is giving way too much information to get to the point. We tease my dad about when you ask him what time it is, he'll often tell you how to build a clock, meaning that you just want to know, you know, it's 10 o'clock or whatever. And he'd be like, well, you know, if you go this way and you're talking about this and blah, 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 blah. And like 30 minutes later, you still haven't even gotten the time out of them. So <clears throat> what are some things that you can be self-aware of in your business. I think how you perform your tasks, right? Like what are the items on your list that you have to do every single day? Do you save them to the end of the day to get done? Or you're like, boom, 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 I just get them done and and they're done. Being self-aware of how you use your time, being self-aware of how you close people. A strategy call with a new potential client and we're going through some things and just realizing, you know, where people are in their life and and being self-aware that they have a long ways to go, right? So some people think they have everything put together and they have everything figured out, but then you start looking at it from another perspective and you realize there's a lot of opportunity that I may be missing out on. And so without going too detail into this prospective client, we were exploring some of the things that they're working on in their business and and how they bring in new business and how they lead generate and how they find new clients and how they nurture these leads, right? And they were saying, you know, I'm good at bringing in the leads, but then after that, like if they're not ready to work with me right now, I don't really have a great follow-up plan. And I'm like, cool, like let's explore that a little more and and see how we can help you overcome some of these challenges. And so we started talking 
talking about, you know, what are some of the ways that you kind of hold their hand through that process, knowing that some people aren't ready to work with you right now. They may be saying, you know what, I'm interested in talking to you more and I want some more information about what service you provide or product you sell, but I might be three or six or 12 months down the road. And I think a lot of, especially in real estate, a lot of real estate agents will just be like, okay, well, I'm here when you're ready. Like you've got my card. Most people will lose that card in 48 hours of meeting. So if you want to work with them, you got to stay in contact with them. You got to keep putting content in front of them until they're ready to go, right? Because when they're ready to go, they're ready to go. Like they need to sell their house, they need to move, they need, something needs to happen right away. Most people don't just kind of leisurely take that opportunity to buy or sell a house slowly. Like when they're ready to go, it happens. And so how you build that relationship, and this is kind of going in a weird direction with this question, but you've got to realize, you know, what are some of the things that I might be missing in my business? Being self-aware or just aware in general of your business and, and how you go through the process, how you handle the business that you have, how you handle the leads. You know, if you meet 10 people this week, I guarantee eight of them will not be ready to work with you immediately. So how you handle those relationships and build those relationships and nurture them and stay in contact with them and continue to bring value week after week after week until they say, okay, I'm finally ready to work with you where we go from here, right? So I think for me being like, the question basically is, what are some ways that you can become more self-aware? For me, it's taking time to kind of dissect my day every single day. So one of the things that I do, and I'm not religious about this, I'll tell you that, I'm not perfect, but one of the things I try to do every single day, I've got this awesome chair in the corner, it's my favorite spot in the whole place, and I sit there with this pad of paper and I just go through my day, I'm like, hey, I worked out today, I meditated today, I talked to clients today, I created the show today, and I just go through my entire day and I'm like, what did I do? How could that have gone better? Is there a way that I could have addressed this differently? And I just kind of do a, a real quick evaluation of the day, right? It's usually about 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes it'll go 30 if I've got some massive stuff that I need to go through. But I just kind of be, I try to get aware of, of how I handled each situation. If it's a call with a new client, I, I ask myself, what could I have done differently in this situation? What different suggestions could I have? How could I have prepared for that call better? How could I have brought more value to that client? If it's a show like this, are there some things that I could have done to have the show ready on time? Like I know we're a couple minutes late today and getting started? Are there things that I could have done before 10 o'clock so that I know we can go live at 10 o'clock and I evaluate those things. So I'm just always auditing my life. And I think you can do the same thing. You know, before you go to bed at night, just grab a piece of paper, grab your phone or whatever, and just spend 15, 20 minutes. The cool thing about this is it'll allow you to become more self-aware, but it'll allow you also to really reflect on the day and see, you know, what did I do really well? And where are some things that I need to work on tomorrow, right? How can I use my time better? How can I be more efficient with my time? How can I delegate some of the things that I'm working on? You'll start to see things that come up in your daily life. You're like, why am I doing this every single day? There's some things that I can punt and give to somebody else. So anyway, I think I feel like it's a great exercise in your life to do every day. And if you don't do it every day, at least try it once a week and just go through the day or the week and just say, look, what are some things that I need to work on? How can I handle these situations better? If you lost out on a sale in your business, you know, go through the process, work through that appointment. You know, what questions did you ask? How did you handle their concerns? Did you know how to handle the objections that they came up with? Probably going to be life changing for you once you start realizing some of the things that you're missing out on just those little opportunities. So spend time to do that. It's a, it's a great exercise. So that's how I become more self-aware. Just again, rewinding the day, seeing what I did. How can I do better on some of those activities? Okay, let's keep going. Question number two, I want to become an entrepreneur, but I don't know where to start. So I know we've got a lot of people who follow our show, a lot of fans from other industries. And so we wanted to kind of make this more broad as entrepreneur rather than how do I get started in real estate? But trust me, we're going to get into the real estate one in a little bit here. But how do I how do I get started as an entrepreneur? And you know, I'm not going to give you the Webster's definite definition of an entrepreneur. I'm just going to say, if you don't want to collect a check from somebody every single week, meaning like an employer writes you a check, whether you showed up or you didn't, if you took sick days or you didn't, if you sold something or you didn't, that's not an entrepreneur, right? An entrepreneur is business owner, self-employed. You got to go hustle for your own work. Even if you're selling stuff for another person, let's just say you go sell something for somebody else and you get paid on a commission, like a car dealer, right? And you go work at a car dealership and you're selling toys Toyotas, for example, if you're only paid when you actually sell something, I would consider yourself an entrepreneur because your results bring in your opportunity to make money. I feel like that's the definition for me. So where do I start when I want to become an entrepreneur? And that's a very broad question. Again, I feel like these questions are super broad. But for me, as an entrepreneur, you got to figure out what's going to excite you, what's going to make you passionate about your business. And again, if you've been in, in your business for 20 years, you might need to ask yourself this because if you're not excited about getting out of bed in the morning, you're not driven by your business 
clients every single day and you're not super passionate about what you're doing, you might need to kind of reevaluate this process in your business and see, am I going in the right direction? Do I love what I'm doing? Do I just need to make a minor shift towards that way or that way to find what I'm really looking for? I've done the same thing in my business and I'll kind of give you an example of how that worked. I got into real estate by accident. I, I went into uh, real estate from the construction industry, right? So I was a project manager for a big commercial contractor in the Bay Area. We were doing like a billion and a half dollars to work a year, building big things like the Levi Stadium and airports and, and tall office buildings in downtown San Jose. It was an interesting job. It wasn't what I loved, but it was something that was interesting and it pushed me on. It definitely caused a lot of stress in my life, which was good because it allowed me to grow really quick. But it wasn't what I loved and I tried to explore some other things. So that shifted me into the real estate world back in 2009 when the economy crashed and real estate was crazy and people were giving away their houses and the banks were selling them at deep discounted prices. And I was like, hey, this is kind of fun and, and I think there's some opportunity here. So I got into real estate and through a bunch of avenues and trying to figure things out, I said, no, I'm not interested in that. No, I'm not interested in that. Let's try this. Nope, that, no. Nope. And I just kind of worked my way through to finding what I really enjoy. And after, again, a decade of investing in real estate and wholesaling real estate and managing rental properties and selling uh, homes to homeowners and working with buyers to buy their own home, I've kind of gone through that whole process seeing what is it that I enjoy about real estate? For me, I think one of the things that I love most about real estate is the business side of it. I enjoy a scaling, right? I enjoy the investment side. I definitely enjoy owning rental properties and seeing the passive income come from that. I enjoy flipping houses and being able to remodel them and seeing what excites me about that. For now, uh, I really enjoy helping real estate agents put themselves out there and tell their story and, and create content around them and their business so that they can attract the leads that they're looking for. Uh, and, and that's what I love, right? So I think the entrepreneurial journey that you're going to go through is going to be a long path. It's not just a, okay, that's what I'm looking for. Let's get to it. And, and for some of you, it might be, but for me, it was more of exploring and realizing what I don't want to do, what I'm not interested in doing every single day. There's going to be some strengths that you have in this life and some massive weaknesses that you have in this life. And if you want to focus on the weaknesses and say, okay, I want to get better at this, then that's great. But if you're like, look, I know that I'm terrible at this and I don't want to do it every day. You've got to push those things aside and, and focus on the things that you do and that you are great at. For me, when I was in real estate selling homes every day, I knew that I needed to be on the phone. I knew that I needed to generate uh, leads and, and new opportunities for our business. So I'd get on the phone. I'd call for four to six hours a day. I'd go door knock on the weekends. I would hold open houses. I would do things that I didn't love to do, but I knew I needed it. I had to do it to generate uh, business for us. And <clears throat> while doing that, I realized, okay, I don't want to do this every day. So let me find out other ways to do this better, right? And that's what led us to a marketing agency like this. So it allows me to, yes, bring in more business and yes, put ourselves out there, but I don't have to do it in ways that I don't want to do, okay? So as you go through your entrepreneurial journey, figure out what am I interested in life? Is it real estate? Is it, you know, the auto industry? Is it the healthcare industry? Is it some type of selling a product industry? What is it that you want to explore? And then what are the different avenues in that industry that you can explore? Let's just take real estate again, for example. You may love real estate because of the potential income that it provides, or you may love real estate because you like working with uh, the homeowner and thinking, you know what, I'm going to help you build your, your dream, find that dream house, build this lifestyle that you're looking for. And that's what excites you. Plenty of real estate agents that I work with, they love the homeowner and they love holding their hand and being there and teaching them and educating them and just helping them work through this difficult process of buying or selling a home. Other people are you know, more transactional and they love the investment side of it and building passive income for people and helping investors to acquire more rental properties and the multiple um, transactions that happen with an investor week after week after week. So look at your business and see what it is that you like about it and see how you want to be involved in it. Do you want to be in the in the field and selling and, and dealing with those transactions? Do you want to be more of the business owner of it? I've met plenty, ah, plenty of real estate agents who, who own a team who sell hundreds of homes a year who don't actually ever work with the client. They own the team, they manage the team, they run a group of real estate agents. They're kind of more of a broker, but in the different sense of what a broker typically does, they're more of a business owner, right? And you can scale that way. So look at your, your entrepreneurial journey as kind of a, a, a realization of life and what it is that you like to do. Are you, you know, more of an outgoing, friendly, personal type who wants to work with the client? Are you more of a numbers driven person? Are you more of the, you know, systems and organization and making sure that everything is organized and laid out and, and perfectly orchestrated? There's a profile test that Tony Robbins give out call, gives out called the DISC profile, D-I-S-C. And I can't remember exactly what the acronym stands for, but they each are specific words. And when you take this test, it'll tell you, you know, you're either high in D or I or S or C, and each one has a different meaning. Go take the test. If you basically just Google Tony Robbins DISC profile test, you'll find uh, 
the test is there, it's for free. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to do, and then you get the results immediately, which is cool. And it really tells you what your strengths are. For me, I'm a high S and a high C, which means that I'm really numbers driven, that I like systems, that I like organizations. I'm a little OCD on some of that stuff. I'm not super outgoing, right? I'm not the, the extrovert who wants to just hang out at parties and talk to people. I'm not like the social guy who just has to talk to everybody. So I'm more of the behind the scenes, like let's figure out how to do this and make sure that it runs properly and that everybody has their things that they need. And that's what I shine at. So as you, again, begin your entrepreneurial business, figure out, are you the social person? Are you the sales person? Are you the numbers person? Are you the program person? Where do you shine and what are you best at? And in the beginning, you might have to do all of that. I understand that completely. If you don't have the check to go write and pay somebody's salary to be on your team, you're going to have to do all these things. And I've been there and you got to quickly realize, okay, what's the biggest thing that I've got to get rid of off my plate as fast as I can so I can go back to focusing on the things that I enjoy the most. For me, I knew that that was getting into the systems, uh, not autonomizing, but systematizing things as fast as I can, just making sure everything worked out the best way as possible. So I know my strengths, you got to focus on yours. That's really what I would, I would focus on. So hopefully that helps in your entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a well-rounded answer. Okay, this question is a fun one too. I'm currently on a real estate team with a dozen other agents. How do I break out and start my own brand? So this question actually was asked to me one-on-one -on -one and um, I love this question because I feel like a lot of agents are in this situation, right? So Tom Ferry and all these guys are talking about the team mentality. And really, if you wanna win in real estate right now, you need to be a part of a team. And while I think that's partially true, I know that agents can survive on their own right now. It's getting harder and harder. And here's why, because teams have bigger budgets. Teams can really focus on the strengths of each individual team member. Again, when you're by yourself, like that last question, you're going to struggle with some things. And if you're by yourself, you might not be super social. You may not be willing to door knock every single day. You may not be willing to create all of your social media ads. You may not be willing to or ready to write all the newsletters, right? There's so many moving parts. But as you have a team, you can say, okay, you know, this person does that. That person does that. This one is in charge of this and, and everybody has their place. And whether that team is seven people or 70 people, everybody's going to have their position and focus on their strengths. And as you grow and you're the team leader, you're going to realize what pieces you need. Uh, on our real estate team, we had about 15 people at any given time. We had specific buyer's agents. We had specific listing agents. We had stagers and contractors and transaction coordinators. We had marketing people and just everybody had their specific role on that team and everybody shined perfectly at what they needed to do. And obviously it wasn't perfect. We had some some issues here and there and we had some people that needed to go and, and new people we needed to hire and, and there was turnover from time to time. But you realize what those key players are on your team. And I think that's why a team makes sense. So as you're on a team, right? If you're in real estate and you're moving towards I want to be on a team. I'm brand new. And um, I'm just looking at the fourth question because I think this is going to tie into that. And I don't want to answer that question yet. But as you're, as you're brand new, you may realize, look, being on a team is the way that I need to go just to kind of get my footing in the door and, and being on my own. I don't have the budget for, or I don't know everything. It's okay to be on a team, but have your exit strategy, right? If you are going into real estate, are you going to work on a team your whole entire life and just say, look, I just want to be a cog in the wheel and I just want to be a buyer's agent or a listing agent, or I just want to do this one thing. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, you just got to know that. And if you do want to leave someday and go start your own team and be your own brand and, and do maybe the higher up level of things and run and orchestrate that team, you need to know what that looks like. And you need to know when that day is. Okay. So, so is it five years out? Is it 20 years out? Is it 12 months out, right? Where is that process? How are you going to recognize that? It's For me, I realized that most agents on a team and they're going to do that one thing, right? So if you're new on a team, you're probably going to be put in as a buyer's agent and you're going to get to know your buyers really well. And you're going to understand how to help them buy a house, how to get qualified, how to really understand how to buy a house as clearly as possible. But you may not understand how to stage a house completely. You may not understand how to negotiate when you're selling it. You may not understand how all the other parts of that team work, you may just understand the buyer side of it. So if you are on that team, you may ask for some experience with listing, or you may try to follow around uh, the stager one day and just see how they stage a house just to kind of get to know the rest of the business. Because if you just go break out on your own, you can be a buyer's agent, but eventually you're going to need to take some listings, right? 
you're going to need to do some other things besides just be a buyer. And maybe you end up hiring uh, a listing agent someday to kind of fill in that other, that other side of the team, but you've got to kind of expand your talents and your abilities. So how do you know when it's time? For me, it makes sense when you can generate enough business on your own, right? When you're on a team, the team's going to hand you leads and they're going to have systems in place and they're going to have the whole thing orchestrated, hopefully, right? Not all teams are this way, but if you're just a buyer's agent, and I hate to say it just a buyer's agent, but there's no problem with being a buyer's agent. It's just that if that's all you're doing as, as a real estate agent is being a buyer or helping the buyers, you may not know how the emails go out every single week. And you may not know how the Facebook accounts generating leads. And you may not know how the ISA team is picking up the phone and calling past clients. You may not know how to follow the people properly. So there's a lot of moving pieces there that need to start happening. But if you can say, okay, I can take myself out of this business and I can have enough month after month business for the next six months to like get on my feet and really figure out where this is going, then maybe it's time. But if you don't know anybody and all the leads are coming directly from your team, it may be a little too early. So you've got to start figuring out your own brand image and who you represent and what your ideal client is going to look like and how to get in front of them, right? Are you just completely 100% counting on all the referrals from your team to come in there and support you? Or do you go to BNIs? Do you go to Toastmasters? And do you go network events? And you know, are you holding your own open houses that get people there without having to rely on the team to drive traffic there? Are you a part of a community and, and getting to know people outside of your group that can say, look, I know you as an agent and I would list with you no matter what, right? You're not trying to steal leads from the team. You're just trying to say, look, I've got my own book of business. And this is who I am. That's the time where it makes sense where you can go start your own business and, and really run your own team. The other thing I would suggest with this though, is to have adequate financial systems in place, meaning that to be on your own, it takes quite a bit of money. Um, you know, if you've got to hire a TC transactional coordinator or other elements of your team to help you, it's best to have some extra help. You know, if you just go out on your own, it may wear you down and you may not be able to handle all the pressure that comes from being um, an individual team owner. So you might have to hire some help or give up some of your commission to help with some of these things. So do you have the financing in order to support this team? I would typically recommend about six to 12 months of business expenses. So are you supporting yourself financially? Can you, you know, live within your means? Are you able to make house payments? and car payments and all the other things that come along. Are you able to designate some of your income towards marketing? Even if it's only $100 per month, what are you doing with that $100? Could it be $1,000 a month, right? Where are you putting this extra money that's coming from your business? Um, are you able to, to pay for staging if you need to you know, hire a stager? Are you able to pay the TC fees? Are you able to pay your split, right? Maybe that's a new thing that's going to be coming up is you might have a split with your brokerage depending on where you're going from here. So consider your monthly expenses as a real estate agent and, and how you're going to cover these fees. Again, do this math before you're like, look, I'm tired of this team. I want to do my own thing. I'm out. Maybe one weekend you get frustrated and quit. I've seen agents do that. And then two, three, four weeks into it, they're like, this isn't really working out. I can't figure it out. I can't generate business. I'm not getting anywhere. And then they have to go join another team and start the process all over again. So make sure you have your, your money set aside. I would suggest at least 12 months of business expenses and at least six months of living expenses. Those should be two different numbers, right? Again, uh, are you able to pay your rent or your mortgage payment or your house payment and your food and all that stuff for six months? And then also, are you able to pay you know, all your real estate dues, all your marketing fees, you know, any salary that you need for 12 months and really get to know those numbers and understand what they are. That's the time when it makes sense to go start your own thing. Plus being able to generate your own business, plus being able to follow up with all your past clients, plus being able to send out, you know, an email every single week and a newsletter every month or whatever you do to get your content out there. You need to be able to be self-sufficient and, and go to that separate island that you have, right? Like you left the mainland and now you're on your own island doing your own thing. You got to decide who am I hiring? next? You know, do I need an assistant next? Should I bring on another buyer's agent? Should I bring on another listing agent as a partner? Who's going to be the next person that you hire? And, and when is it time to hire? And can I afford that hire? There's a lot to think about. So if you're on your team and you're thinking it's time to go, go through some of these steps and really figure out, does this make sense? Don't just get frustrated and think, you know what? I want to do more. Again, there was another agent that I was talking to who's a buyer's agent. And they're like, I've got so many people who want to list with me. And it's not fair because I can only work with buyers on my team. I can't work with the listings. And that's okay. You know, if you want to work with listings, maybe you go back to your team owner and say, look, I've got a couple of listing opportunities. They're friends or local people that I know. Do you care if I handle this listing? Because I want to work my way up to a listing agent. Maybe that's the next move for you right? Just to kind of get some different exposure. And maybe they'll say yes. Maybe they say no. If they say no, 
um, hopefully you're at least getting a referral out of it, right? And if you've got somebody who's trying to sell their house, hopefully you can get a referral fee. That's how we structured our relationships too. If you brought, if you're a buyer's agent and you brought in somebody who wanted to sell their house as a personal or friend or something like that, you actually get 50% of that commission because we still had overhead and we still have to stage that house and remodel it and do some things to make it a beautiful house to sell. So there's some costs. Plus we had to play commission split to the broker and things like that. So there's some fees. You can't just give 100% of that transaction to you. But you know, is that around? that you wanted to go. You just got to explore those things. Don't just get fed up one day and be like, I'm out. I, I got to do my own thing. This isn't for me anymore. So really have that conversation in your head and making sure it's time to go. We're getting some good questions here. Uh, question number four. This is the wrap up here. If you could, what advice would you give yourself when you're just starting out? And so that's kind of like the, I'm beginning my entrepreneurial journey, but starting out. This is how I'm going to answer this question different from number two. So if you miss number two, go back and listen to number two. But question number four is just starting out. And I would classify anybody who's brand new into, I would say like kind of the working life experience, right? They just got out of college. They just got out of high school, maybe. Maybe they're coming back from being, you know, a stay at home mom for a while. I know that that's a big journey for a lot of you guys, you know, coming from somebody who teaches a lot of real estate classes to people. There's a lot of moms out there who had a career, you know, from their twenties to thirties and they had kids and they took some time off and now they're coming back after their kids are kind of self-sufficient doing their own thing. So let's talk to that audience for a bit. Or if you're, again, just brand new out of college and looking for something. So number one, if you're just starting out, you've got to realize what it is that you want to do. And I know you have a million opportunities. There's so many different things that you can do in this life. And that's the beauty of it. I talk about this quite a bit, but I read an article back from 1997 that said when a college graduate gets out of college, they have 38,000 different career opportunities to choose from. 38,000. And that was in 97. Like the internet was still figuring itself out out. There's definitely no smartphones back then. Like all the apps and technology that exists nowadays are, are completely not included in that 38,000. So I would say based on where we are today in 2019, you probably have a hundred thousand different choices of career options. So the sky's the limit. If you want to get into real estate, like I'll go deep into that subject with you. But if you want to get into app development or self-driving cars or AI kind of stuff, like there's just a world of opportunity for you out there if you want to try to figure it out. For the most part though, I think a lot of you guys are going to get into the service industry, meaning that you know how to do something really well and you're willing to do it for other people and get paid. And that's cool. Like I think that there's always going to be a demand for that, right? Robots are not always going to come in and, and take over and clean houses and sell real estate and, and do all these things. Like you've got to figure out what it is that you're doing that is uh, maintainable, that's enjoyable, that's scalable if you want to do that rather than you just doing it all the time. Uh, and then also, you know, something that's going to be profitable for you on a per hour basis because you probably have, you know, if you got daycare to pay for or uh, after school time or, you know, whatever it is, you got to make this hopefully financially benefit for you. And there's probably plenty of you who just want some other stimulation, who are willing to work for free just to kind of have some other stimulation in life and to do something that's going to challenge you and, and grow you and, and push you to learn new things. But what I would say is I love the homework assignment. So I'm going to give you another one. Take a sheet of paper today. It's Monday. Whenever you watch this, if it's Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Tuesday, take a sheet of paper and just spend 10 minutes, set a timer, you know, tell your phone, look, set a timer for 10 minutes or whatever, and write down everything that you're interested in. Don't worry about breaking it up. Don't worry about, can I get paid for it? Just write things down. You know, like I like skiing. I like camping. I like cars. I like horseback riding. I like making bracelets. I like braiding my daughter's hair, whatever it is, write all the things down that you want to do things that you love to do. And then what I would do is put a star next to the things that you would do if you could do them for free. Okay. And just say, look, I don't care if I don't get paid. This is just something that I really love to do. I just want to kind of explore some things. And if I have to do this for a month for free, just to see if this is something I want to do, put a star next to that and just say, I'm willing to explore this. And the reason for it is because if you're willing to do something for free, if you can get paid for it, how much better is it for that? Right? So there's going to be some things that you like to do, but you're like, ah, you know, I'm willing to clean bathrooms, but I definitely need to get paid to clean somebody Alice's bath. Okay. Good example. So write down all those things, figure out what they are. If you can do something for free for a little while and you can still kind of like maybe reside on a spouse's income or some money that you've saved, or you have some other type of money to cover your need for a month, just figure out what it is that you wanted to do. What I would do now is that you have your list, go find people who are doing those same things and go mentor them for a little bit, not like providing advice, but go uh, follow along and just see what they're doing. Right. What do you call that? Like internship or something like that. Just go follow them along and say, you know what? I really enjoy this industry. I'd love to follow you around 
around for a couple of days. If there's any value that I can bring, you know, what are some things that you need, right? So for example, in real estate, if you want to get into real estate, don't just be like, I need to go get my real estate license. I'm going to go pass the test. I'm going to go start selling homes. Go find an agent who's been selling houses for 10 years and just say, do you mind if I help you? You know, tag along, help you with your open house. If there's anything that I can do as a non-licensed real estate agent, what can I do to kind of see how your business goes? I guarantee if you reached out to any real estate agent who has some business, they have a million things that they can put you to work on. Whether it's setting out signs, helping at an open house, you know, maybe handing out postcards, door knocking with you, just a ton of different things just to kind of get some exposure and, and see what they are doing. Uh, the next thing I would do is after you follow somebody around for a little while, see if you can go either get a job with somebody and get paid for that. Maybe it's the same person that you mentored for a while. Maybe you realize, look, I got enough experience in this that I know that I can do this thing on my own because you've been doing it for a while, right? If it's, you know, again, like braiding hair or something like that, maybe you want to start a hair salon. Maybe you want to cut people's hair. Maybe you want to go clean houses or feel like I'm just, I don't know, spouting out random ideas, but go figure out how you can get a job in that industry to see again, if you like getting paid for it, because I think you can have a hobby in life and then you can have a job in life. And I'll take this experience from me and share it with you. When I was in school, I changed my major seven times. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I mean, I was all over the place. I was like computer science and um, graphic design and aviation. And I finally ended up in construction management because it was something that I kind of enjoyed enough to get paid for. And I realized that there's some things that I really like to do in this life, um, but there's things that I don't want to do for eight hours a day and have to get paid for it because it's more of me just kind of enjoying it, right? For example, um, I have a 52 year old vehicle and while it's fun to drive and it's fun to play around with and I can you know, rebuild the engine when I want to and tinker with it, if I had to work on that thing every day, it would drive me crazy. I like cars and I love driving old cars and they're a lot of fun, but I don't want to have to work on them every single day. It's just not something that I enjoy. So if somebody was like, hey, do you want to come to my garage and help me work on cars for a week or two? I'd be like, yeah, heck yeah. Like this would be so much fun and I would love getting to know more about the cars and seeing how they work and you know seeing what this guy is doing to them or whatever. But if someone's like, hey, would you come over here and work for $20 an hour and, and work on this car? I think I'd be able to survive about two or three weeks, then I'd be done. I, I just wouldn't enjoy it, right? So if you can do something full time and get paid for it and realize this is something that I want to explore and do, then you're on the right track. What I see so many people do when they're brand new is they're like, this is what I want to do. This is like, put the blinders on and this is all I'm going to focus on. I'm going to go get my license or I'm going to like quit everything that I'm doing and I'm going to put all my money into this one thing and try to figure it out. The problem with that is three months, six months, a year later, they didn't expect all the things that were going to come from that. They didn't see the whole picture. They didn't see the whole day. They didn't see all the moving processes that were there. I think real estate is a big one. It's so easy to get your real estate license nowadays. It takes about 36 days in most states. You can pass the test pretty easily. Some people take some two or three times. They pass the test and now they're like, well, now what? I don't know how to sell a house. I don't know how to go find clients. I don't know what to say when I go door knock. I don't know how to run social media ads. I'm stuck. And so they get to this point where they're like, real estate sounded fun and it was interesting. And I know you can make a lot of money, but I don't know how to do it. And now they have a real estate license and they're probably two or $3,000 deep into their investment. And they've just, they're stuck, right? So don't do that. Go figure out how to get paid to do that thing before you spend all the effort to go do it on your own. See if you can get a job with somebody, go explore those things. And if you don't like it after two weeks, the best part is you can quit, right? You're not financially invested into this one thing and you can just say, you know what, that was fun. Uh, I realize I don't want to do this full time. It's maybe something that I'm excited about on the side, but I don't want to do it full time next. And you can try a dozen things, right? And if you spend the next year trying to figure out exactly what you love and what you're excited about and what you want to get paid for and what drives you and motivates you and is exciting, and you can spend hours and hours and hours and hours reading about it and learning as much as you can. Now you win, right? And you didn't just go head deep into something. And I feel like college does that for you. They give you four years or five years or however much time you spend there. And you're like, hey, you got to pick a major. You got to decide exactly what you're going to do for the rest of your life, even though you're 18 and you have no experience with anything, good luck. And then you're a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars in debt. And now you've got to do this thing for the rest of your life to pay off this massive debt that you have. And that's what sucks in life. Like you can't just play around with it and figure it out and, and explore. So take this time when you might be financially covered for a moment and figure it out, right? Figure it out how you can go get paid, how you can go make this a job if you want to. And it's going to be a job for a while, right? It may be something that's super exciting, but for the most part, you're going to be asking for money from somebody to see if you like this, to explore your talents 
talents and abilities and say, look, I thought this was going to be fun, but I definitely don't want to do that every day. I'm not interested in scrubbing toilets, or I don't want to pick up after people, or I don't want to touch other people's hair when I have to braid it, right? What are the things that are going to drive you crazy about that business? And what are you wanting to focus on? And just because there's some things that drive you crazy about it doesn't mean that it's not for you. Like for me in real estate, there's plenty of things that I don't want to do on a day-to-day -day basis, but there's things that I love doing in real estate that I can keep doing. I just got to delegate their things that I'm not interested in, but go get paid. See if you can do that for like six months, just to kind of cover your needs for a while until you realize this is the direction I want to go. And then you can start a plan of saying, look, in two years, I want to own my own shop or I want to have my own team or I want to do this full time for myself and not have to listen to somebody else and not take their direction, but work as long as you can just to see if you understand the whole business, learn from their experience, their, their failures, their wins, what they're doing really well. Uh, I've had some massive success with that in my life. You can take a lot from the people that have something to share from you. Go find the person who's probably top in their business right now in that area and just see what you can learn from them, right? Go go internship with them again. Go see how you can learn from them, see what things that they're doing in their business well, and then break off and do your own thing for a while. Okay, don't just go head over heels and say, this is my new life and this is what I'm gonna do or do. And in six months later, you realize what a disaster that was. Why in the world did I think this was gonna be a lot of fun? So anyway, that's my advice for you guys this week. Uh, this has been kind of a long one, but I think there's some awesome tidbits in it. Again, we answer you guys' top four questions every single week. I appreciate you guys coming up, showing up, asking awesome questions. It gets me to think and really figure out how I can get my mind around it and then bring some more value for you guys. I uh, love it. So anyway, appreciate you guys being here. We will see you Friday. Friday on Facebook Friday. I can't remember what episode we're on. I think we're on like 120, but it's going to be an awesome one. Again, thanks for being here. Let me find my cue to end this show and hopefully you guys are enjoying our awesome outros. Thanks, Jonathan, for putting these together. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.